always enjoyed living in the Berkshires because I find it to be a very unique, close-knit um, place to live. We have a very extensive vegetable garden. We've been getting beef and pork from a local farmer, and we get our own eggs from our chicken. So in eighth grade, um, a year ago, I saw what the high school students were doing with this food initiative, and I thought it was fantastic. And I just knew I wanted to become a part of it the second I got into high school. I first started working with the food project my junior year. My friend Sophie Randolph graduated last year. She started the food initiative with Zoe Borden. Sophie Randolph and I were both part of the student senate. We both felt that an issue was school lunches. If I have to eat pizza, I will, but I don't know. It's never looked appealing to me. I bring my own lunch because I'm a vegetarian, and they don't really offer vegetarian options in the cafeteria. We represent the student body. They want better lunches. We saw a lot of processed foods in our lunches. It doesn't have as many nutrients as fresh food. You get served cut peaches in syrup, but we have these amazing peaches that are grow out here. We have great apples that grow right, actually right next to us on Windy Hill Farm. And we're getting served apples in plastic bags that are pre-sliced. Why not tap into our natural resources? That really started the discussion about if it was even feasible to get local lunch in the cafeteria. And everyone at the PTA was like, yeah, we can do this. A community member had a connection to state representative Smitty Pignatelli. Smitty Pignatelli recommended that we hold a roundtable meeting with people around the community to sort of garner support. Welcome to this meeting this morning. I'm Mary Ann Young, and I'm the principal here at Monument Mountain. And Students brought in community partners. Faculty. Matt Massiero from Guido's Marketplace. Art Ames and Matt Novick from the Berkshire Co-op. The product is grown right here. Smitty Pignatelli he helped us invite uh, state representatives from the Department of Education, Public Health, the leader of Berkshire Grown, which is just centered around locally grown food in the Berkshires. This uh, pretty much everyone showed up. Monument Mountain would be would like to be considered as a pilot project. For Our students have said we want to improve and really create a dynamic lunch program. Our food service personnel says, you're asking us to do this. We really want to do that. But we are short-staffed. We are underfunded. We are regulated. We get 225 for lunch. It is supposed to pay for all the food that comes in, the payroll, the health insurance. You can't eat from McDonald's. Um, oh. <laughs> we planned a local lunch pilot day. The lunch was fantastic, and people really loved it. Our cafeteria purchases through Cisco, which in turn gets their food from other sources. Who knows where? <sighs> Shipping this food all around the world to get it into our cafeteria creates a huge amount of CO2, a main contributor to global warming. So for example, locally grown apples travel 61 miles, whereas conventionally sourced apples travel 1,726 miles. So you can see how much carbon that's really creating, because it's, it's a lot of carbon. The veggies that they have are usually always from the garden that's down there. Project Sprout was started five years ago by three students who decided that they wanted more local and fresh vegetables in the cafeteria. Here is our greenhouse, and here we grow radishes and lettuce during the winter and other root vegetables that go up to the cafeteria. Kohlrabi, carrots, spinach, tomatoes. People come out on Saturdays, whether it's kids from the school or people around the community. We weed the garden, plant the garden, harvest. That food, in turn, gets served in the cafeteria. They bring in lunches from the local garden and like fresh veggies and food, so that's kind of nice. One of our main problems at Project Sprout is that our main growing season is in the summer when school is not in session. 
So we've been working with the Berkshire Co-op to create a bartering system. The students during the summer will give us their produce, we will sell that produce, and in the winter when they need that produce in return, in carrots and anything else, we'll simply give them that product in exchange. Once we had the pilot launch day under our belt, we were granted one day a month that we could totally take over the menu. Fresh food will have more nutrients and kids will have more energy during the day. One of the main concerns that food services had was that they didn't have enough staff. You have to prepare fresh food. You can't just unfreeze it. You can't just take it out of a can. So it was more work, and that's where we stepped in to say, we'll help with that extra work. So we had students in the cafeteria mixing avocados. We had teachers cutting vegetables. We planned a rotating schedule so that each of us could plan, uh, with the help of a local chef, each month. In October, I worked with Brian Alberg of the Red Lion Inn. I went to the Red Lion Inn and we sat down and worked out a menu. The Red Lion ordered a prize-winning steer from the local fair. And Brian Alberg was like, we want to use it for the lunch, for the local meatloaf. And then he actually had all the local farms delivered to him and then he got all of it and delivered it to us. And then he cooked it with us and students also helped out and it was, yeah, it was a good day. <laughs> Not only was our meatloaf grass-fed, it was a really great opportunity for us to show students where our food is coming from. We realized that that local food day every month was a big process. So we're aiming toward getting a few locally grown items in our lunches a few times a week. If we purchase more from local farms and local grocery stores, then Obviously, that gives them business. It'll increase the local economy, and I think that's a great goal to work towards. Our generation, we're the ones that are going to have to be the problem solvers for tomorrow. And why not start here and reduce our carbon footprint by buying locally?